a weak win over a strong New Zealand. I don't know how to put that. So <laughs> I would say that New Zealand was weaker on the day. Yes, as a West Indian fan, I'm happy that they are qualified for the Super 8. But I'm not necessarily happy about the manner in which they achieved it. Should Charles be dropped for she hope um, for the next game? Well, I think that is fairly straightforward. Welcome to another edition of At The Wicked. I'm your host, Kavali Arnold. On the back of the Stindis qualification, so the Super 8 of the ICC Men's T20 World Cup. Exciting times for the Windis fans. We are joined now by three excited Windis fans. I, I think I see Reza Abazali here. We have Joseph Reds Pereira and former West Indies, West Indies player, Jerome Taylor. I, I, Jerome, I wanted to, I'm going to touch on Azari Joseph's exploit um, subsequently. But let's just get a reaction of, from, from all of you. A weak win over a strong New Zealand. I don't know how to put that. So <laughs> I would say that New Zealand was weaker on the day. Yeah. And a traditional team like New Zealand, West Indies playing and they could defend 150 runs. I would give credit to West Indies. Even though we as West Indies, we're going to mark our players hard because we know what is expected of them. And I think they themselves know that there's a high expectation on them as well. So I would not get to the point where we think we have to get edgy just yet. Um, we are, we are, we are getting to the business then of the cricket. And I think. Yeah, I, I think that a look sort of situation and we have to come to the floor, you know, um, it is a true test of character and the fact that you would find individual brilliance that would bring us across the line if we do not get a collective team effort, which we know may never happen at any given time. Some people are not, not going to stand up on the day, but you will have players who people do not expect to come forward and come forward with that brilliant sort of performance. And it goes to show that Rutherford did it for us and with the ball in hand, Moti did it. Um, the bowlers, mm -hmm. they, they were working. And as you look at World Cup now, I can say that it seems to be a bowler-friendly World Cup. I don't know why. It is happening like that, but it is happening. And I would not. I, I, I would go back to a point where Reds um, alluded to the fact that it was a weak win. A win is a win, yes. And uh, if you win in a good way or a bad way, you have to address the fact that your work needs to be done. Now, um, and for the and for the viewers, I think I think everyone would know what happened in the, in the game. But we will lauding praise on and Sheffield Waterford because he was the star of the show. You know, with a 68 from 59 deliveries. And, and, and the bulk of the, the runs came in the last two overs when he really took to Mitchell Statner and Daryl Mitchell. You know, he when we look at where West Indies were, West Indies are coming from a place, as Virgil said earlier, of 30 or 5 just outside the power play. And, and, and then when we look at, even after that, with loss of wickets. But, you know, the bowlers came out fed off that confidence um, from Rutherford now. You know, um, Joseph with four for 19 off his four overs and Gurekesh Moti, uh, and that's Azari Joseph that is, because there are two Josephs in the team. Um, and Gurekesh Moti with three for 25, dismissing New Zealand for, for 136 for nine, winning by 13 runs. So it is brilliant in their, in their performance. L let's just look at, and we've, we, we, we commend the West Indies for winning and getting to the Super 8, that's good. But let's just dissect um, the manner in which they played. You guys mentioned a lot of it just now. But what can be done differently um, in terms of better playing? Um, yeah, and, and, Reza, and, and Reds, and let's just look at that coming up there on the screen. Charles, uh, Reza spoke about, you know, assessing. Well, we've seen it three games now. I don't know, maybe Charles doesn't have it in his game to assess the conditions well. 
Now we have someone like Shehu for the bench. Should Charles be job for Shehu um, for the next game? Well, I think that is fairly straightforward. If you have to judge people on cricket terms, uh, Charles, um, Charles has always been that kind of a player. He's always, um, you know, cross basic batting fundamentals. He's got no way with it on some occasions, but his ratio of doing well for the West Indies um, is probably um, one in every ten not. I, mean, I haven't done research on it, but it's that kind of inconsistency. I would like to see Hope come in and open the innings uh, with King. That's one change. Uh, I certainly would like to see Sharma Joseph come in as we are playing in St. Lucia. Uh, a track that Jerome would have loved to bowl on. Good carry to the keeper. Um, you can get, um, you know, 145, 150 clicks if your, 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 your rhythm is good. Um, those, those are two changes. Now, uh, what are you going to do um, about, uh, about Chase? Are you going to keep Chase? Are you going to keep Shepard? Uh, those are some of the uh, of the decisions they they've got to make. Um, I don't I, I don't know what um, are the thoughts of my colleagues on on, on the on the changes. I'm starting with with Reza on you know, that sort of that performance last night and getting into the Super Eight, which was so so important. Yes, uh, thanks so much, Kavali, for having me here. I won at the wicket. Um, yes, as a West Indian fan, I'm happy that they are qualified for the Super 8. But I'm not necessarily happy about the demand on which they achieved it. Because here, what? West Indies are going to, of course, go down deeper into uh, bigger matches coming up. And although we that 149 was enough, West Indies were 113. What was it? 113 for 9 in the 18th over. And one man, one man stood up, thankfully. Shafiq Rutherford, 68 in what, in 39 balls. But you know what? West Indies, and this is my concern here, West Indies were 23 for four after the power play. Charles going for duck. Puran going for 17. Bo, 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 bo in 12 balls. Chase going for duck in two balls. And then you had... Uh, is it uh, Powell gone for one in five more? Mm -hmm. The top order is not standing up, yeah. and that is my major concern. Yeah, I, I, I feel your pain. I feel yes. your pain, but but I, I'm happy for for the win. Um, let's yeah. hear what, what Reza would say about the Stinders winning and not not Reza, um, Rez winning and yes. getting into the Super Eight. Um, before we dissect it a little bit more with you, Reza. Okay. Well, I would think that. Darren Sammy and his coaching staff must be extremely worried about the batting. I just, the information you got just now from my colleague uh, in Trinidad speak for itself. Um, Rutherford saved the day for the West Indies because had we lost that, we would have had to be able, we would have had to be able to beat um, Afghanistan here in St. Lucia. If we did do that, we were out like south. So we owe a great deal of gratitude and appreciation and respect for Rutherford. Because of all the top order batsmen, although um, Hussein, Shepard and Moti supported him in very important partnerships, not large, but he enough to get us to 149. Rutherford was the only one who played with common sense who didn't panic, who didn't try to go as hard as some of the top order batsmen. And this must be worrying to Darren Sammy as we go forward. Um, yes, it's a win, but it was a kind of a, um, almost a, a weak win. And um, conditions weren't, weren't great. Uh, one must, must say that it was a, a bowl of friendly pitch all of early French uh, kept low, um, batting wasn't easy, Sorry. but a lot of the, the dismissals had nothing, well maybe Shepard, Shepard went to pull a ball that hardly got, got 
you know, midway up um, past his ankle. But the rest gave the wickets away, and Urad was the biggest culprit. Yeah, I, I know we, we, I guess because of expectation, we feel some type of way about the Stinnies and the manner in which they, they won the game. But Jerome, as a former player, um, what is it like, you know, when you're in that dressing room, you know, not playing at your best, but looking at, oh, we got the result, we got into the Super 8. Is it like that? You got the result, you get into the Super 8, and we'll fix that as we go along, or is it some sort of concern? Um, what, give, give me that as long with your reaction to, you know, how you felt about that uh, victory last night. Well, yes, um, as a player, in the dressing room or outside of the, outside of the dressing room, it is a cause for concern. Um, knowingly that if I, for our 50 over World Cup, now we're here on the stage again where we have won this twice under the leadership of Darren Sami. He's a part of, of, of this group, the head coach of the group. I think it is their room for improvement. It can be fixed, not to get too edgy at the moment. It is early stage, and I do think that we can fix things. Reza, you, you, you were straight off the bat saying you, you were a little bit disappointed in the, in the performance. Yes, yes. Let's start with you in what can be done in, in, in remedying the performance. Yes, well, well, yes, a good question, and I, I was expecting something like that. Um, listen, um, we have seen one of good toss and good West Indies in Japan. The pitch variable bounce. I mean, top and low, you know, but the, the approach, I mean, the first ball, and I mean, Johnson Charles switched the first ball he faced, and then I think was first over, he then got an inside edge, and that was the end of Johnson Charles. Something, something, I mean, we, uh, we got to take this ball by ball, assess the conditions as they should be, you know, um, I mean, feel how the, how the pitch is playing. You're going for these big shots, and I mean to say, injudicious shots so early in 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 at any power play, and um, yeah. I mean people talking about Kuran's approach also, and um, bam bam bam, 17 runs in what 12 balls, and then he goes for yeah. a big shot, and uh, he he put it an excellent job, cash it in. But they have to show some sort of discipline. This pitch or the pitches, that, I mean that have been um, laid wherever in the US and the Caribbean right now. I think some of one of you, I mean made the point that it's it's a probably more bowler friendly which is fine because in the ipl batsmen and and teams hitting 250 runs every every innings so the approach it has to be methodical and that's my that's my pain and feeling it's not methodical yeah um, so I, I, I would... we would say that um johnson um charles who straight off is a no-brainer but let's look at the bowling side of it now jerome uh, as a bowler yourself we, we saw the exploit of, of Azar Joseph last night, Gurdike Shimoti and Kiel Hussain consistently doing well. But Reds is looking at a specialist bowler coming in, possibly uh, in Shamar Joseph, in conditions that maybe will favor him. So what's your take on that? Or should we leave, leave the bowling as is, given it's clicking? Well, let, let me say to you, um, if you have a winning formula, and I know that sometimes we do choose horses for courses, right? So I, I, I would part and parcel be part and parcel be okay with what Reg is saying. But knowing the captain, knowing knowing the coach as a tactician and as a strong leader, and now giving the job, the role as a coach, I think they would sit down and, and, and discuss moving forward. And I am here to back whatever decision. They would come up to because i was once in the dressing room and i i know how it gets at times when changes people are looking on and people are analyzing right but as a player and if you give a certain player the confidence to play they will play the brand of cricket that west indies wants to play they would have to pay attention to that and then fine tune that sort of cricket moving forward i strongly believe that they are trying to get the right players in the right place, the right ingredient moving forward. Yes, we are now qualifying for the Super E, and you have people who you'd want to have a look at because going to the business end of the cricket, 
you just have to come up with the right formula. You understand? You have to choose the right. So I, 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 I am one of those who have high regards for Azari Joseph as I would say the leader of the bowling pack presently. But yet still, our dead bowling we have to look deeply into that. Would you bring, we have to look at bring somebody in or, or, or just look to fine tune some things um, in the team in terms of strategy with who is already there? I, I think it's more fine tuning. Um, no doubt there, there, there's work to be done. But it cannot be a start over. So it must have to be a fine tuning with who we have there to move forward. So we have to look at the bench and say, okay, who are we going to have a look at? Who we think that we might need to have a sit out and whatever the case may be but looking at the team i i have all the belief that they can get to the finals and win and win cricket record yeah with what is there so, so if darren sammy fine tune things then we could be looking at west indies just playing a little bit more clinical and and with the team that's there and getting the results um it's good to see all of that um, but looking ahead to the Super 8s, they will be playing oppositions uh, like like they played New Zealand. They will be playing Afghanistan in the next game. These are tougher tests than than the previous game, so they want to want to get things things right. I don't know if there there are a lot that can can be changed. I think that if we get that dot ball percentage down, I've said that before. I think things will be things will be a little bit better. I think in terms of strategy, yes, I think there are things that we need to look at. And if we can get that dot ball percentage down, they will look better because the bowling is doing well despite not having maybe the names that we think should be there. Um, I don't know what you think, um, Beth, about that in terms of the strategy and getting the dot ball percentage down and playing more. And that will help us to play the sense of the cricket that we're talking about going in going into the super eights. Right. Oh, I, 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 sorry, I, I thought that it would be my colleague from Trinidad coming in. Um, <laughs> Go around, see I, I think that I expect on cricket, on cricket, um, on the basis of cricket, hope should come in and place of yeah. Charles. Yeah. Um, just to follow up um, the, the point made by our, our, our hope for City's fast bowler. Who might claim that he's an all rounder because he's got a test hundred. Um, we both get that. Um, New Zealand. Yeah, New Zealand too. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I want to say to Jerome yes, we can fix this, but the only way we can fix this is if we have a total different attitude towards the responsibility of the top order. Unless we have that kind of attitude. Which was highly demonstrated by Rutherford. Um, we are going to fail uh, again, and, and hope that somebody come in the middle order and rescue. Us. We cannot be so attacking. Uh, we cannot be so indisciplined in our stroke play. Uh, we have to make sure we don't lose a lot of wickets in, in the power play. Um, you, you know, you can always pick up runs even if you're a little behind in the power play. But do not lose a great deal of wickets. Just some information on the pitch here in St. Lucia. I spoke to Ken Crafton. Uh, the entire pitch was not relayed. Ken Crafton told me two days ago that he took off a half inch from the top only. He took off a half inch, draped it off, redressed it, and he feels it's going to be the same pitch that we all know. Now, if that is going to be so, um, should we bring in Shaman Joseph? Yeah, I think that that is the question. And when as we get to, closer to the game, we will look at that in, in our preview. I want to ask three questions as we close out the West Indies segment, as we look towards the US. Um, I'll start, start with you, Reza, in asking about, uh, let us look at, in, in your opinion, which player has lived up to expectation and and what hasn't lived up to expectation sorry that hasn't lived up to expectation and what can they do to turn it around I, I, don't don't tell me 
um, Johnson Charles because we are looking to get him out of the team. We're all advocating for that. So, which player has not lived up to expectation for you, and what can they do to turn things around? Oh my gosh, well, you know, I might be, I might be hit for six with this, and um, <laughs> and um, I mean, Nicolas Buran is is. I mean, we know of his exploits in the IPL and other T Twenty leagues in the world, um, and um, he's batting at number three. And if he's batting at number three, you have an early wicket. I mean, I mean, exiting or whatever, he's almost facing eighteen overs. Right, he has much time to solidify his position in the in the middle, batting at number three, take his time, and I mean, accumulate the runs. And we know he can hit balls, you know. I mean, powerful shots all around the wicket, almost uh, what you call a three sixty player. I mean, like Sam Surya Kumar, Yadav, and them fellas. But I think Nicholas, I mean, he had he got a wonderful round of applause last night. He was playing on his home ground. I mean, yeah, let me tell you something, um, guys. When Puran was 16, I had the opportunity to lecture Puran on the history of West Indian cricket. And when I met Puran at the age of 16 at the National Cricket Academy, I was back in 2015, 2016, as I mentioned. You could see Puran, I mean, he was so, so energetic. He wanted to succeed. And then, of course, you know, he had his car accident a few years ago, I think it was 2015, that he was, I mean, I mean laid off for months. So Puran, Puran knows what life he came from. And I, I mean, I would like him, you know, the essential and key part of this top order that he needs to, I mean, I mean, just reassess his own mind and condition and, you know, build an innings. That's all I'm asking from him. Okay. All right. So Nicholas Puran has to live up to Reza's expectation and back pages of the paper in Trinidad tomorrow. Uh, now, Reg, I must ask you, I, I leave the room for last as we... As, but let, let I must ask you about from your vantage point, which non-performing player has lived as had the potential to be a game changer in the Super Eight? You mean um, apart from or Red? Is it Mr. Red who answering? Yes, Red. Red well, here. Yeah. Which non-performing player currently, you know, has the potential to be that game changer in the Super Eight? Wonder if we'll get to remember the name again. Um, for the for. For the West Indies. Well, I, I would think, you know, you can start with Puran, um, you know, as a game changer. But the only way he's going to be a game changer is if he puts on his thinking cap. You can only make runs if you stay in the middle. And you, uh, you you can get 17 off or 12 and then walk off. Um, that's not going to help the West Indies. Um, I think that. Our all-rounders have got the capability of playing a, a, a dual role, uh, which is probably very healthy for us. But the batting, the, the top of the batting, um, has got to be fixed. I have a lot of faith in Hope. If Hope comes in, we have a, a stronger batting lineup, and he has influence on the guy who's a non-striker because he works the ball around. He, he's not a a boundary hitter like uh, some of the other players. He can hit the ball like he, but um, he can bat. He, he can play normal cricket shots. And I, I would like to see um, that addition at the top of the order. It will influence the entire order. Yeah. All right. We will go to um, my fellow countryman, but if I should answer my own question, I look to my own countryman in the captain of Powell in, in, in having that sort, those sort of performances. Um, to have the game-changing performances in the Super Eight, I was disappointed last night. Now, Jerome, I must ask you about um, for for a player's perspective. You know, which player's performance has surprised you the most this tournament, and why is it Azari Joseph's four wickets last night? Um, like I said, I, I've watched Azari over the years, and I've been I'm a fast I'm not answering your question. Uh, this is it must be Azari. But go go ahead. Yeah, um, I have watched him over the years and I do admire him as a player. But um, as far as Puran is concerned, I know him as a big keep game changer, Rabman Powell, who I know can get the ball across the rope. They both can change the game at any given time. I've played with Johnson Charles and I've seen his work. I, I am of the belief that they will get to that point. You know, um, it just needs a little bit more thought process 
so to speak. Um, but like I said before, if the brand of critique that we are looking to play is to impose ourselves, and once we are imposing ourselves, then we have to maximize our four plays. And by doing so, we're going to lose wickets. Once we think we have players in the hut that can repair the damage that happened up front, then I think as a team, we are willing to take that. But I can feel the pain of the West Indian public, uh, my fellow analysis, an, 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 an analysis here who are analyzing. And I could get where they're coming from, but as a player, I would have to come inside the dressing room. I would have to come outside of the dressing room to speak because I once was there and I understand what it is like being in a dressing room, having the confidence in a bunch of players who we think can get the job done, but it's not happening just yet. Coming off three wins, I can tell you, I'll take it any day, however it comes. Yeah. But we always get together, we regroup, even though we got a win, what can we improve on? And I can assure you that this conversation is happening in the dressing room as I speak. Yeah. So these big name players who are not living up to the expectation just yet, I can assure you that they're going to come to the party because they know what time of day it is, they know what is expected of them, and they know what they can do. All right. There you have it, viewers. A lot is expected of the West Indies from the Super 8. But before they get to the Super 8, they have that game against Afghanistan. And Afghanistan is a real tough team to go up against. They, we saw what they did to New Zealand, run riot with New Zealand. The West Indies would not want to take them for granted going in that game. Papua New Guinea is up against it with them also. So, West Indies. We'll be looking on and saying, all right, let's come to the spin of Afghanistan as we look to get to the Super 8. All right, we will we will now shift our focus um, to the US. So thank you. Thank you guys for joining us. Uh, I don't know if any of you guys will be for the US segment. We'll be shifting our focus to the US as they look to take on... Oh, I, I, I missed... Is it here? They they played against India yesterday, and that was some game um, where they where they lost, and they they're looking for another tomorrow and see if they can have that sort of performance as when they take on Ireland um, in the morning. So, thanks guys for Just joining us. You know, and are you sticking around for the US segment? Well, I think you have got somebody, um, a US correspondent coming in. And I think yes. that it's best for the show if he took my place and, uh, you know, I think he's much stronger in that area than I am yes. on the U.S. team. Okay? Yes. Yes, so he's coming in. He will be coming in for, as we look to look about U.S. But but before before we just get a quick word from you guys. Um, yeah, just get a quick word from you guys. Uh, how impressed are you with, with, with the U.S. and their, and their performance um, so far in the tournament? Well, they're, they're a very confident, very confident bunch. And the opening game against Canada uh, certainly reinforced that. Uh, they've got talent. They've got talent. Um, I think more in the batting department than the bowling. I don't believe that Ali Khan has yet come to the party, so to speak, um, because he hasn't performed as expected. He hasn't, he hasn't performed as we've seen him perform for Trinidad. But, um, you know, it would be great for U.S. cricket if they qualify. Very great for U.S. cricket. Yeah. yeah. Um, I, 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 I thought yeah, that you're coming at. Yeah, I thought uh, that game with USA and India. Um, if you remember, they, it was tight, you know, at one stage where um, India needed, I think, 35 and 30 balls. And um, the umpires penalized the USA five runs uh, because apparently yeah. Jones was taking too much time to spin the last over into the, the falling over. You just need 60 seconds to change overs. And uh, what I was reading, he was it was about twice he was warned. And the third time, they penalized him. And that 30 from yeah. 30 relaxed the pressure 
and um, Nadav, and I think it's um, I, um, are you the same? I think um, just took their time and just you know um, just 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 went through the really, victory really rather easily. But Jen, I mean, but but as Mr. Red said, they have been quite impressive, and um, it's a big big of course. Uh, Philip for cricket in the United States. Um, I'm reading about big leagues, six big leagues in the U.S. Uh, um, big finance and all that stuff spreading. I mean, wherever and however. So um, if they do get through, which as you mentioned, I think on top of the year, uh, they are the match yeah, yeah. Up against Ireland, and they're into the Super League, which is I mean fantastic. You know, not only for cricket, I mean generally, but you know, for 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 the world itself in terms of. ในในในในในในในในในในในในในในในในในในในในในในในในในในในในในในในในในในในในในในในในในในในในในในในในในในในในในในในในในในในในในในในในในในในในในในในในในในในในในในในในในในในในในในในในในในในในในในในในในในใน
earlier posted 110 for eight. You know, the batting lineup, um, and I must say, they were without their captain, um, Manang Patel, who had a little shoulder niggle, um, sit out the game. They said he would be fine for the next game, but they just didn't want to take chances. And I think maybe they also looked at the looked at it things and said, let's not risk him in this game, given that we may need him more against Ireland, which they saw they might have a better chance of winning. And, you know, they went out there, played good cricket, despite not winning, and they're looking ahead to Ireland. But how impressed were you uh, of your performance, despite not winning, Lenny? Well, first of all, i got to say great afternoon to all the viewers around the world. It, it, um, I'm, I'm super impressed with the United States team, the way that they handled themselves in the first two games. Um, they had nothing to, 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 to lose in terms of the last game against India that they played yesterday. Uh, they could have handled themselves a, a little bit better, but you know they, they they were missing a couple of key players in in, in terms of Manak Patel, the captain. And I do think that in terms of the pace attack, they wanted they wanted some someone more of a wicket taker. I think Mitchell Galfa is, is a wonderful fast bowler, very beautiful variation of pace. But end of the day, Jesse Singh is a great bowler as well. Ali Khan, great, but I would love to see a fast bowler such as Drysdale in the attack for us instead of having jesse sing in the attack you know not to discriminate not to, not to discredit jesse sing for what he has done for us throughout the years but i think the likes of drysdale he would bring a lot more of experience into the fast forward unit for the us team and a lot more fierce a lot more variation and it could cause a lot of damage for, for the us team if he's given the opportunity yeah they are steering down um Super 8 qualification, just Ireland to get over. Ireland can be a tough team. They've not had the sort of World Cup that they would have wanted so far. And also, they'll be playing in a place where you might see rain. They just need a point to go cool. So if it if rain comes tomorrow, then they should be fine. But they would want to go in and get a good get good performance and, and win against Ireland. Ireland can be a tough team if they get it right. They have some quality players. If they get it right, they might they might be in some problems. Um, what's your take on their approach, possible approach to Ireland? Well, absolutely. We've known what the weather can bring in Florida. We know that it's a hit or a miss. It, it will forecast the serene in another five hours after it. It's nothing but beautiful sunshine and beachy weather. But the way that I've seen the, the last couple of days, I, I don't think that there's going to be a ball ball in Fort Lauderdale. Never, never, never to say the less. It can happen. But I do see them coming out on top. We know that the, the, the Ireland team, they have nothing but great talent in, in their team. And we have seen it over the last four, five, six, seven years. Oh, tremendous they can be. I watched them against the USA about two years ago and they were very demolishing in terms of playing in US style. And they, they've got the confidence, they've got the players in the, in, in the team, the unit, the dressing room to, to, to deliver that job. But I, for, from my perspective, I don't see a game playing tomorrow in Fort Lauderdale. Oh, oh, so here we have a weatherman, Lenny. I know you are a, a lot of things. Englishman, I know you have that brilliant English accent. I didn't know you were a meteorologist as well. Um, let's see what happens. What, what happened tomorrow? I can't. I can't look so deep into my crystal ball. I don't have a meteorology crystal ball. But but if they should get to, to that super eight, it would be massive for US. And 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 develop on their cricket, but um I don't know how well um Jerome and and Reza I don't know how well you guys know the Ireland team, but I I must say it's, there are some really good players in the Ireland team that will be looking to to have a sort of good game against um the US because they've not had the best of World Cup so far. You know Paul Sterling, we know what that what he brings. You know um he's top jaw. You know Josh Little. I had an IPL cruncher. I had a to look and um look and took up. These sort of guys can really perform. Um Dockrell even even and, and Ben White and all of these guys. Curtis Comfort look a really good player as well. Um in that in that middle order. He will give you something with the ball. Um and Andy Bell Bernie, experienced player, been around. So this is a strong team if they get thing, things right. Um the US have been getting things right. What, what do you think about these players if they get things right they really could scare scare the us tomorrow uh, well Jerome? first first let me say i i i i know of paul sterling he can be very destructive 
but he's only one player. Um, I, I, I played against Ireland before and they gave us a good run. Very, very decent team. But I know with US have a game at hand, thinking okay in front of the home crowd, they have all to play for. I think they're going to come out tomorrow, all guns blazing. I think they, they, they want to make history. You know, they want to qualify. Uh, you could watch you could watch the way they go about within the first game. You could see the camaraderie. You could see the joy that they bring to the country, to the people of the US. So they know that they have a lot at stake. And I can say that they would they would they would go in the the, the dressing room or wherever they have to go and meet and just sit and look to come up with plans of how can we get across the line tomorrow, barring the weather. I mean, the weather would play its part. That's the heavens, and nobody have control over that. So you cannot sit around thinking, okay, we might not get a play. You know, once once the fat lady sings and they said, look, let's play. It's game on. So I think the US have a pretty good chance of getting across the line here. But I am not hoping that Ireland would come here to just lay down and play dead for the US to walk over them. So it's going to be a good contest, if you ask me. Once, yeah, once the yeah Reza, I, I want to ask you about um we, we saw Aaron Jones in the, in the last game um not having the, the performance that he had in the, in, the, in the previous game but we saw other players you know stepped up a little bit um but Aaron Jones you know he looks like a class player um I guess he want to go back to putting in his putting his, his name back on, on on the lips of all the, the everyone in the cricketing world tomorrow against against Ireland. Um, how impressed are you with, with his performance so far um, as the batter that is, that is you know, yes, um, setting from the light? Yeah, Aaron Jones, um, if I'm reading it correctly, uh, born in the USA of Bajan heritage, am I correct? Yes, Bajan heritage, yes. Yes, indeed, indeed. Yes, yes. and um, I think in the first match against Canada, he had 90 plus. Yes, uh, yep. Second and highest score as for a debutant at the World Cup behind the right, grid. Right. And then in the second in the second match, it was it um who did it play? Is it um a winning that yep, another brilliant performance. performance? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So Jones, I mean he was substitute captain for the last match against yesterday against US because of the injury for Patel. But um as I mentioned before, against I India. Sure I can yeah, against India. Jones is a supremely confident player. And um, I remember, I think you had him on your show. And he he, he plays, he, he's, not, he's not looking at names. He's not looking at names. He's not looking at reputation. He just looks at the ball, plays the ball as his merit. And if it's to be hit, he hit. So, I mean, the US, along with Jones, I mean, they have nothing to lose when they came into this tournament for the first time. They are parents. So I will again be happy that if they do qualify, it paints a different picture in world cricket um, to have the USA now among the Super 8s. And um, that's, as I mentioned before, is, is, is beneficial for cricket all around the world. So Jones, um, um, I'm quite impressed. Uh, he's, he's a I mean, shot maker, uh, extraordinary shot maker. Yeah. <laughs> some of those yeah. long sweeps, sweeps in the first match was, was spectacular. He just picks up that ball brilliantly. So he must be doing something behind the scenes to get that kind of, uh, you know, um, dexterity and form. Yeah, and, and let me just ask Jerome about, you know, we, we spoke about Nature Valka already, but when you then move to, the, to other pitches, and let's just hype, speak in hypothetical terms now, we should get to the, to the Super 8s, they'll be playing not on, uh, on those pitches in the US, those recently dropping pitches, they'll be playing on other pitches in the Caribbean. We don't know yet where they will be playing and who they will be playing against if they get through. But how do you think they will adjust to those conditions, especially from a bowler's bowling standpoint, and um, when they get to the Caribbean, speaking hypothetically now, Jerome? Well, look, um, as a player, once you get to a ground, you would have practice sessions. You may not be in this in the middle, but you can tell what is happening around the ground if you pay attention to detail. And some of these things can help you to go out on the pitch to execute. Now, once you get to that venue, you want to practice as if you're playing. Because it's the same thing you're going to execute on that pitch out there. So, 
in T20, the shorter format, you'd have to assess and assess very quickly. Win factor, the surface, what it have to offer, probably within an over, right? If it do cause for the subtle variations, then that would have to come into play as quickly as possible. So, I mean, with T20, you have little or no time to catch yourself. So you have to be fast thinkers. You have to be on your feet. And with the ball in hand, you can have like two, three balls to assess a wicket, whether the bounce is going to be there, whether you're swinging, or you'd have to bring in cutters or whatever you have to use. So it, it's about a player who is confident and know that, look, there are 24 balls to be bowled and it is one at a time. And you have to appreciate at that. So once you start appreci appreciating at that ball, then look, you try to bowl that after that after that. You have to be, you have to be proactive. As a bowler, you cannot be reactive. You have to be proactive. You have to think like a batter when you're bowling. In in these format of the game where you have little or no time to catch yourself because players gonna look to dominate you. They're gonna come after you. So you sell, you as a bowler, you have to go after the batsman. Let them know that you're there. But you have to be smart about it. And I think they can. But once you come, you adapt. You check the conditions and you can adapt to it. You can adjust to it. Then it will be at the show. I mean, the, the, the pitch will tell you what length you can bowl. And you have to have that go-to ball. You have to diff, you have to back yourself as a bowler to execute on a given day. The bowler, the captain have to work together. Whatever field placement they want. All right, let's go with the bowler. If it's not happening, then all right, let's go with our plan. But the bowler is the man behind the ball. You have to give him the backings. That boosts confidence. And once, he's, once the bowler is executing, you're on point. You're on point. So I can tell you, regardless of what the surface is or what it's doing, it comes back to your execution. You have I mean, to be able to do good execution from them so far in the tournament, these bowlers. Um, let, let's just, let's, I, I must ask Lenny about expectation. I must, when we look at the US team, we can, we can argue that the novelty factor was there and you know a lot of teams would have seen them play they brought some new players into the team all of videos and all of that and that's there but after after these four games if you should get into the super eight then that not the fact that i don't know if it will be there um as much because yes they are different it will be different conditions but not having that novelty factor anymore and the same level of expectation Will be on the on 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 the team to play in that that same vein that they started with. Um, how well do you think they will live up to that? I heard you mention the the confidence of the team, and you know we spoke to Aaron Jones here, as you said, and he was really confident. And I was saying that this confidence from Aaron Jones to me is not just a Aaron Jones confidence; it's the confidence of the team that's oozing to him because they believe in 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 what they're doing. Um, how will they manage that sort of expectation, not having that novelty factor? I think the negative factor is not really a big deal for, for, for international cricket players in terms of the US. They, they have Most of these guys have been playing the cricket all around the world in the Caribbean, in the US, in the subcontinent areas as well. And I think they're fully experienced. You look at Aaron Jones, you look at Stephen Taylor, the confidence that they have in, 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 in this US team and what they have brought to the World Cup and the, the experience. I don't think that will be an, an, an issue for them to, to go out and, est and establish themselves and showcase the talent and the class that they have. And they, ha they have a lot of talent and a lot of great players that can play anywhere around the world. And I think it, it shouldn't be a big factor. They have enough experience, enough composure, the confidence. They have They have everything it takes to go out in a different part of the world and, and perform good, good basic cricket. That's all it takes. Basic cricket and they have what it takes in the camp. Right. Let's see how they manage their expectations starting tomorrow against Ireland. A, a big game. A big game. A, a win not, not, not to cut today. you, but when you mentioned the Port Lauderdale and the Central Bar Regional Park, a lot of these players, they're playing all the tournaments. They're playing the MAC tournaments. They're playing the US Open. They're playing in, you know, Stephen Player plays cricket here in South Florida. So they're, they're, they're used to these conditions and they're, they're used to these sorts of parts of the world and, and they will come out and deliver. I don't think that's a factor for them. They're just going to come out and display what they have to display and the confidence behind them. They will demonstrate that. Yeah, and I can see your confidence in them. Yes, Reza? Yeah, just uh, I'm about to leave. I mean, I have to leave now, but I just want to, with your permission, acknowledge, you know, the outstanding uh, contribution of Mr. Jerome Taylor to West Indian cricket for the season. Absolutely. 
132 wickets, um, ODIs, 90 ODIs, and 128 wickets. Well done, Mr. Jerome Taylor. And thank you for thank sharing you. the Thanks for the contribution, man. I wish I was watching you still in this World Cup squad. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, that's it. I did. All right, good. All right. All right. Thanks, Leza. All right. Yep. Yep. And, and we, we are just eager to see how they will play against Ireland tomorrow. And a win would set them up with so much more, so much more confidence going into the Super 8. Um, even if, you know, because we might have weather, might play its part, and they'll get into the, they'll, they'll get into the Super 8. But you'd want to get into the Super 8 on the back of a win because you don't want to go in on the back of a lot and losing one game and then the other game rained out. We're seeing New Zealand and, and the biggest problem with New Zealand is because they, they came into the tournament a bit rusty. You don't want that. You don't want any, anything to break your momentum. They, so I know they want to go into the Super 8. Um, get a, you want to get a win to get into the Super 8 with that confidence, with that momentum. So let's see what will happen uh, well, tomorrow. What I can say about getting to the Super 8 is get, is get there. I get mean, there. after you get there, it can be your luck. However you get there, it could be the lucky way of getting there. Once you get there, that could be the turning point. So I think Team USA will be looking forward to get there. However it costs, get there. Um, well, but at, at Korean, this is who I'm, who I'm not seeing much of, who is a big player. Um, I've played against him, I've played with him over the years. So I know what he can do as well. I've not seen enough of him in this World Cup thus far, but hopefully he's one of the players who can who can who can come to the party for the US. Um Steven Taylor, who is a namesake of mine, I I think he he's someone who have a lot more to offer to the US team as well, who I think can do a great deal for the US. So I I I'll back in the US team. Yep. All right. Here we have it. Get there. Is is the is the Praise, we will close our segment with um, thanks for joining us, Jerome Taylor, with, with all your insight. L Lenny, thanks for joining us all all on US cricket. Um, we had Rex Pereira and we had we had Reza Abazali um, earlier. They, they left us a little bit earlier. Thanks for joining us, um, viewers, and we will see you again tomorrow morning. We will have that that live studio broadcast of the us ireland match here on Biff cricket um we start with the pre-game show at 10 a.m um eastern so make sure you join in stay tuned and, and i must say before we go if you have not yet subscribed please like share and subscribe to the channel and also um, turn on your notification to get all the notifications when we go live so we'll see you Again, please turn on your notifications. You'll know when we're coming on for the, for the next segment. And join us tomorrow at 10. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, Alvin. All right. Cool.